In this video, I'm going to go over some of the best applications that are privacy respecting and can enhance your overall privacy on your Android smartphone. I hinted at making this video in my F-Troid tutorial, and I highly suggest that you check that out first, as most of the applications that I'm going to show you are only available through F-Droid. And it's also a good idea to download your applications through F-Droid in the first place instead of the Google Store, since Google requires you to identify yourself with a Gmail account, which is a pretty ridiculous violation of privacy. I mean, seriously, you don't even have to identify yourself to purchase bubblegum from a corner store, but you need to give up your name, your phone number, and your date of birth just to install Angry Birds. The Play Store is pretty absurd when you take time to think about it. So set up F-Droid first, and you can watch the video that I made about it for a guide on how to do that. So the first F-Droid app that I recommend you install is NetGuard. NetGuard provides both simple and advanced ways to block access to the internet from applications on your phone without needing to actually have root privileges. Some phones simply can't be rooted, usually because their bootloaders can't be unlocked to load the software necessary to grant you root access. So without root, it's impossible to fully disable the low level spooky applications on your phone or to load a custom ROM like Lineage OS or Graphene that doesn't include that spooky software to begin with. However, NetGuard allows us to essentially neuter these applications by blocking their internet connection and preventing them from being able to phone home with our data. Now, when you first open NetGuard, you'll be greeted with a dialog to allow VPN connections since NetGuard uh, essentially is a local VPN that uses that technology in order to block the traffic. So just hit OK on this. And then you'll also be asked to enable or actually disable the battery optimizations for NetGuard since it has to be running in the background at all times to do its job correctly. So just hit OK and it should automatically bring you to the battery optimization dialog. Simply scroll down to NetGuard, click on it, and then make sure that it is not optimized. And then from here, we can go through and block which applications you want to. There are separate controls for blocking applications access on Wi-Fi or on a cellular connection. So to fully block an app, you'll have to do both. Now, by default, NetGuard whitelists all of your applications, and you have to go through and manually move them onto the blacklist. However, most of the applications that are on a default Android build are spooky, or don't really require an internet connection to do anything besides show you ads. I mean, seriously, why would a graphing calculator app require internet access? It's not like a TI-89 needs internet in order to do calculations, so why would an app that emulates it require an internet connection? So to make the job of blocking apps in NetGuard easier, I recommend changing its default behavior to blacklist everything. And you can do that by tapping on the three vertical dots in the upper right hand corner and then tapping on settings. And the first thing that I'll actually do to save everybody's eyes is go into options and then use a dark theme. That looks much better. Then go into the settings again and go into the defaults whitelist, whitelist blacklist and tick the switch to block Wi-Fi, block mobile, as well as block roaming. And then this way you can go through 
and select the apps that actually really do need an internet connection. So then you can just go ahead and whitelist them and leave everything that is blacklisting. Now we can take this step a bit further by going into our settings again and selecting advanced options and then ticking the switch to manage system apps. Now it is worth noting that switching on this feature may require more trial and error to get your applications working correctly because many of the applications that you directly interface with, like a web browser for example, may require some of these settings that it is built upon with these system apps. So if you disable internet access to a necessary feature in your system app, then you might end up with something like your browser or your messaging application not working either. And speaking of browsers, the next application that I recommend we use is Bromite. Bromite is a Chromium fork with ad blocking and privacy enhancements. Its main goal is to provide a no clutter browsing experience without privacy invasive features and with the addition of a fast ad blocking engine. Now, Bromite is not available by default in the Ftroid repository. So you're going to have to add in that custom repository by going to settings, clicking on repository, and then adding in that Ftroid URL. So I can go ahead and show you what that URL is. So this up here is the address for the Ftroid repository, as well as the fingerprint for the signing key. And as always, you should verify this repo URL and the signing key yourself. Don't just take my word for it. I could be a secret government agent. You would never know. So once you have installed Bromite, well, once you've added that, um, that repo and that signing key, then you can find Bromite and then go ahead and install it. And once you've installed Bromite, it's time to open it and then start configuring it. To do so, simply tap on the three vertical dots in the upper right hand corner and then tap on settings. From here, the first thing that I recommend you do is to change your default search engine from Google to DuckDuckGo. And another highly important setting is going to be to change your theme to a dark theme. There we go, that looks much better. Finally, I recommend changing some of your privacy settings. Bromite does support using a encrypted DNS. It can use DNS over HTTPS to encrypt all of your DNS queries. If you are unsure about what secure or encrypted DNS is or why you should use it, I have a video which gives you all of those details. So you can go down to secure DNS, tap on it, and then simply slide from off to on to start using encrypted DNS. Now you do have to choose uh, which encrypted DNS URL you want to use. And for my setting, I'm going to be using LibreDNS. So this is the address for that. If you want to use that, you can copy it. If you want to do more research, then I suggest doing some research on the differences between encrypted DNS servers. And I also recommend enabling the do not track feature so that some websites which actually do have a little bit of respect for your privacy will acknowledge that request whenever you browse to them. And if you want to take things a step further with Bromite, you can then go and start modifying your site settings. 
So here you could do things like blocking all cookies as well as blocking all JavaScript. Just keep in mind that these more extreme settings are going to break a lot of websites. The next F-Droid app that I'm going to show you is ImagePipe. ImagePipe is a basic photo compression, modification, and sharing tool. So it's very useful from that social media and photo sharing standpoint. However, there is an automatic feature that is built into ImagePipe, which is very useful from a privacy standpoint, which is the fact that it removes all metadata from an image after compressing it. So if we open up ImagePipe, and then we load a selfie from this app or into this app. We can then click on the three dots in the upper right hand corner to look at the image tags. And as you can see, there is a bunch of metadata that is associated with this image, including the make and model of the phone that was used to capture the image. And many phones and cameras also have a feature where they will apply a geolocation tag to your photos, which is obviously very concerning from a privacy standpoint, since anybody who can easily inspect the metadata of one of your pictures is going to get the exact GPS coordinates of where you are, or at least where you were when you took the picture. And this information has already been used in the past by governments to determine where to conduct things like drone strikes or raids on certain individuals with lethal results. So before sharing any image on the internet, I recommend that you import it into ImagePipe and then you click save. So now this has had the metadata of this image stripped from it. And if we go ahead and open up that new image from this image pipe folder, you can see that the image looks the same. But now if we go into image tags, there is no useful data that is here for anybody to use to try and track us. The next F-Droid app that I'm going to show you is NewPipe. NewPipe is a YouTube front end that allows you to watch videos without actually needing to have a YouTube account or without giving YouTube nearly as much data as they would normally gather if you were to use the official YouTube app or to be using YouTube in your browser. And another awesome feature about NewPipe that I really enjoy is the background feature. So I can show you what this does. Where when you click background, you can fit in this, what this is going to let you do. You can fit in this circle, all custom. Anything you can fit. Let's pause that video real quick. So what this is going to allow you to do is be able to actually play a video while the screen is off. Uh, I can't really demo this while I'm doing a screen recorder on my phone, of course, but this is going to be very useful for things like listening to podcasts, audiobooks, and music on YouTube without having your battery drained by keeping the screen on. The next app that I recommend is Transporter which is an open source public transport app. Now, it should be known that there are a lot of public transit systems that are missing from Transporter. For example, there's no entry for the MBTA. So for me, this app is pretty much useless unless I was to go to New York or New Jersey or one of the other states that actually has transit information. And there's also the fact that most public transport systems offer paper-based bus and train schedules, as well as maps for where these trains and buses go. And obviously, if you have a paper-based solution, then there's not going to be any type of tracking 
And in my opinion, the paper-based solutions are not really that complicated to understand. So if you really want to have privacy when using public transit, I would recommend using one of those unless you're in an area that Transporter actually supports. The final application to enhance privacy from F-Droid that I recommend is really more of a set of applications, and these are the web apps. So the majority of people who are using technology, especially smartphones, are normies. And sometimes you just have to interact with normies for better or worse, and I'm convinced that one of the most difficult things that you can possibly do in life is to get a normie to use a secure messaging application like Signal, Yami, or Riot. And normies are obsessed with using things like WhatsApp, which of course means that every conversation that you're going to have on there will get zucked. So if you're forced to use something like WhatsApp, then you can use the web app for it, and that's going to reduce the amount of tracking that Facebook or any of these other companies that own these messaging apps are able to do. Also in a similar vein is Untrack Me, which will transform links from Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram into netter links that will be opened in your browser. So this way, if you get a link on something like WhatsApp, the Zuck is not going to be able to spy on what you're watching because the video is going to be out opened outside of the control of that application. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. And as always, be sure to like the video, share it with others, and subscribe with the notification bell on for more content. And also, if you didn't notice, I have several crypto wallets, which I am accepting donations on. If you have any crypto like Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Ethereum, I would greatly appreciate a donation from you. If you don't have any crypto yet, then no worries. Eventually, I will have links for government-controlled money, but this isn't as real or as useful as crypto, in my opinion, but that's a subject for another video. Have a great day and enjoy your privacy enhancements.